What's up guys, I'm Kyle, also known as the Panda Man. I'm gonna tell you in today's video why you've been failing in your quest to pack on some muscle. first mistake most people make when they're trying to put on muscle is they focus on nutrition first, right? How much should I be eating? Am I eating enough to put on muscle? That's a big mistake and I'll tell you why. The very first thing that needs to be in place when you're trying to put on muscle is the stimulus, which is the resistance training. Most people do not train nearly hard enough to put on muscle. Putting on muscle is not an easy thing to do, guys. It's actually harder than losing body fat. So the stimulus, so what is the stimulus? Your body goes through a stage, okay, a resistance, a stress uh, response when you're training that's going to signal it to put on muscle. So what do I mean by that? The alarm phase, okay? So if you just start working out, if you can remember back to when you first started working out, like when I was in high school and I first started really going to the gym and I really learned these concepts at that time, which is why they kind of got burned into my brain. The alarm phase, the body says, oh, what's going on here? I don't like this. And then it builds up a resistance to what you're doing. In our case, what that should be when we're training with weights is your body is going to get the signal that it needs to come back back bigger, stronger to handle that stress, right? It needs to come back bigger and stronger to handle that stress. So what that means is if we continue to do the same thing in the gym time after time after time, the body has no reason to continue to adapt after that initial stimulus. So as our training age continues to progress, we have to be more creative and we have to be more realistic in how much muscle can we put on the longer we get into our training career. Assuming that you have your training protocol properly in place, and if you don't, hire a coach, get our free workout that's down below to help you with this. Once that's in place though, guys, you need to make sure you get adequate sleep. Sleep is pretty much when all your hormone production really takes place. If you're not sleeping adequately, throw all this stuff out the window. Sleep is the king when it comes to your health. Sleep is one of the most anabolic things you can do. Okay, we have a four hour block when we're sleeping, basically 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. when the body repairs psychologically, and then 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. when the body repairs physically. In that period of time, if we miss that, we're only getting six hours of sleep a night, that makes the body get the signal that, hey, this is more important, this lack of sleep, which your body will perceive as a stress, it's gonna be more focused on that than trying to put on muscle. Everything your body does, it processes through the scope of survival, right? So lack of sleep over a period of time, is gonna put you into this survival type of state. When our body is in that state constantly, it's not concerned about putting on muscle. Muscle is expensive to put on and to keep metabolically. The body doesn't necessarily like to do it. That's why it's so hard to pack on muscle. So get your sleep. And if you're really trying to grow, I would be trying to get eight hours a night. And if you're younger, even upwards of 10 hours a night. When I interviewed Dave Palumbo for one of my books years ago, he had a year where he packed on 80 pounds of lean weight. I won't say pure muscle, cause I'll go over that in a second, but lean weight, 80 pounds. And what he would do do, he would force feed himself after his trainings with these disgusting shakes. But every time he trained, he would make sure that he did a 90 minute nap. And he was training twice a day most of the time. And he was able to put on 80 pounds in one year. Now going back to how much muscle can you put on in a year? What is possible? When they've actually done studies in my, of muscle biopsies, the most muscle anybody's ever put on, even with anabolics in one year. So I'm not talking about just body weight. I'm talking about pure muscle tissue is 27 pounds. And that's at the very extreme end. So when somebody tells you to gain 50 pounds, of muscle in the air, it's not true. Pure muscle tissue is very hard to put on. So 27 is the upper limit that's ever been found in anybody on anabolic steroids, training hard and whatnot. And they had the genetics. So keep that in mind. The next thing in your quest to pack on muscle, you have to make sure that you're choosing the right nutritious foods, just like you have to make sure you're choosing the right exercises, which I'll get to at the end. What are the best exercises to pick? But going back to the food, the food selection. So animal protein, is the most anabolic type of food we can eat, meaning growth. Now you have to weigh risk reward. Back when I was competing in bodybuilding, I would eat three to 400 grams of protein a day, which is a lot of protein. If health is your main concern, I would not be eating that much protein. If you just want to pack out muscle, then we want to get a lot of protein in. But keep in mind that protein is not a good energy source. So let's say to keep it simple and you want to pack out muscle, you weigh 200 pounds, I would say try to get between 160 and 200 grams of protein per day. Now, what type of animals you want to eat the highest quality that you could find. If we're talking about beef, you want it to be grass-fed organic if you can find that. If it's salmon, for example, 
We want it to be wild caught. We don't want it to be farm raised. If it's eggs, have cage free organic because the animals that we eat, okay, animals store toxins in their fat just like we do. So if they're eating an improper diet or they're being pumped full of drugs, they store those toxins and then we eat them and we store those toxins within our fat cells. And that can lead to a whole trickle down effect with the hormones that's gonna make it harder in the big picture to put on muscle. So make sure you're choosing the right proteins. The next thing, make sure you're getting them plenty of carbohydrates. Enough with this silly non sense where carbohydrates are bad. Stuff like donuts and cookies, yeah, you want to really limit those things. Those should be cheat meals. But your good carbohydrates that came from the earth are what's going to really fuel your workouts and your intensity. They're going to put the glycogen, which is a storage form of energy within your muscles. We want to have that so we can really push hard when we're training to have that stimulus the body gets to pack on muscle. Anything that came from the earth. I'm a big fan of potatoes. White rice is very easy on the gut. Fruit is one of my favorite things. So we, we have a lot of fruit. Fruit's got a ton of nutrients, which is a key thing. We want to get a lot of micronutrients to aid in this uh, uh, concept of putting on muscle. And then as far as fats go, the fats that you get from your animal sources should be sufficient. But if you want to use stuff like grass-fed butter to cook with or uh, organic olive oil, those are great sources of fats. Some nuts like cashews are one of my favorites. Macadamia nuts, which has a selenium, which can help with testosterone production. So those are the types of things you should be eating. Anything that came from the earth is fair game. Now, how much should you be eating? When we get to that stage, again, assuming that you're training, stimulus is in place, which again, I'm gonna share with you at the end, my favorite exercise is to pack on muscle. Training stimulus, sleep, and now we got the right foods, now how much? A simple formula I'll use for people is take your body weight times 20. If you weigh 200 pounds, you should be aiming for that 4,000 calorie mark to make sure we're getting plenty of nutrients. The next factor when it comes to putting on muscle is your training age. What do I mean by that? When you first start out, your body will pretty much respond to anything. So I used to spend two, three hours in the gym when I first started learning about this stuff. And I read a great book back in the day in high school called Big Beyond Belief, which really explained this whole stress adaptation and how to get to keep the body in that zone where it was constantly putting on muscle. But I would overdo it. But I was growing like crazy because I was applying a massive amount of stress to my body via the gym, via the weight room and stuff that I was doing within the weight room. As time went on and my training age increased, so now I've been training for 25 years, let's say, 25, 26 years of my life, it gets harder to put on muscle, but right? there's only so much muscle that we can put on. You're not gonna just continue to put on five pounds of muscle a year. Do the math on that. That would be over 100 pounds of muscle since I started doing this that I would have put on, right? So it's not really feasible. So your training age. So as you progress through that, you're gonna wanna train smarter. Make sure you pick the right exercise. Again, I'm gonna give you my favorite exercises to help you with that, but your training age is gonna be a big factor. As you start out, aim to put on five to 10 pounds those first couple of years per year. As you progress, like when I was competing, if I put on one or two pounds of muscle a year, as I was 20 years into this and whatnot, that was a big deal because on a really lean body, imagine one pound of muscle. That's like having four quarter pounders slapped on you of pure tissue, which is a lot. Now imagine two pounds, that's eight quarter pound burger slapped on you. So it's, it's a very hard thing to do. So just be cognizant of that fact as your training age increases, you're going to have to manage your expectations of how much you can actually put on in one year. The last thing, the exercise selection. Everybody's favorite topic when it comes to putting on muscle. What are the best exercises? that you can do to pack on muscle. First thing we need to realize is your body can have three forms of stress applied to it in the weight room. Mechanical stress, okay, mechanical tension, so the angles and whatnot that we're using within the muscles. So we wanna make sure that we're picking an exercise that really puts the muscle at somewhat of a disadvantage, but really could try to get help with that mind-muscle connection. We have metabolic stress, okay, metabolic stress, which is one of my favorite ways to really focus on putting on muscle because your body is under tension for a long time, and that's really going to affect our hormonal system. So we're going to go over that in a second as well. With that in mind though, before I forget, a set, okay? And this is something Charles Poliquin taught me. A set should take between 30 and 70 seconds to stimulate you to put on muscle. 30 to 70 seconds for one set, which is actually very hard to do. If you go to a regular big box gym, you're hardly gonna see anybody throughout the course of a day that has one set that lasts that long. It's much harder to train that way, much harder mentally. You have to be mentally tough to put on muscle. Now, the last thing we wanna focus on when we're training with putting on muscle is the muscle damage. So that's part of the stress response, right? When the body gets that signal, and that's where really that soreness, a lot of people confuse the muscle soreness with lactic acid buildup. Lactic acid clears out of your body very quickly. It's not lactic acid, it's micro tears within the muscle that you have to recover from. So if you, if you happen to overdo it one day in the gym, 
and you get very sore, the best thing you can do for that soreness, guys, is move. Could even be a walk. If it's your arms, just swing your arms, go for a walk, but the blood flow is gonna help with that. Okay, so now my favorite exercises. When we're talking about the mechanical tension, two things that I like to do. I like to do an incline dumbbell curl if we're talking about the biceps. The mechanical, okay, disadvantage of the arms. The arms are straight back. We're flexing on the way up. We're getting a full stretch at the bottom. When you first do these, these can make you incredibly sore. So that's one example of a mechanical tension exercise. Next one would be a cable squat where you can really isolate the front of your legs if you want to build up your quads. And at cable squats, when we're doing these, we're, we're really taking the back side of the legs out, which we really like to hammer with regular squats and deadlifts, things of that nature. But you're really getting to isolate the front of the legs. So on these, where you're leaning back, you're holding on to the cable and using a cable stack and really frying the front of the legs. So those are two great examples of mechanical tension applied correctly. Now, as far as the muscle damage, what you would do on this is that time under tension as far as those sets. So time under tension, 30 to 70 second sets. Poliquin used to have us doing German volume training, which was like 10 sets of 10 at the same weight with a controlled eccentric or negative. This is going to create a lot of muscle damage, but you're, you're going to get the most sore from this type of training. So you just got to be mindful of that. So if we were doing like a German volume training with the dumbbell bench press, you would pick a weight that you could maintain for that whole 10 sets. Let's say it was 60 pounds for 10 reps, 10 sets. You can't go up in weight until you can get all 10 sets at that weight. And I believe he would have us do like a three or four second negative on those. So with that muscle damage too, a big thing with that and training in that style, time under tension, you're going to get a huge hormonal boost as far as growth hormone goes, because lactic acid goes up, growth hormone goes up, as well as things like testosterone. Now the last one, the metabolic stress, one of the best things exercises that I have found to really pack muscle on throughout the whole body is a long set of squats. So you can build up on these. I would start with a minute set, okay, then a two minute set, but try to work upwards until you're doing an eight minute set of squats nonstop. You should be in this 70 to 100 rep range if you were counting on that, but just set the clock and you go. And the first summer when I started doing these, I noticed even my back development really took on a whole new dimension just from that, because I wasn't training that much that summer. And that was one of the main things I did every week was an eight minute set of squats, which I built up to us started at four and went up to that. So that's one of my favorite things as far as that, that metabolic stress, okay, is the long set of squats, but it's not for the faint of heart. All this stuff takes mental toughness. Putting on muscle is not easy to do. When you enter the weight room, it's a war, it's a battle. You gotta push yourself beyond that prior threshold if you want to send your body the signal that it has to put on muscle. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. I need you to do a couple things for me. I need you to hit the like button. That allows me and YouTube to know that you like what I'm putting out and I'll put out more of it for you. I need you to leave a comment. That could be a critique. That could be a question. That could be a, a recommendation. Hey, Kyle, can you make a video on this topic? Which I'll gladly do. And lastly, I need you to hit the subscribe and notification button. That way you never miss a video that I put out. If this topic interests you and this has been a pain in your butt as far as trying to put on muscle, then just go down below to the information for this video. You could click on the link for our free top secret special workouts. There's four of them within there. Every workout, every exercise has a video, it takes you through exactly what to do. Pretty awesome. It's something I put together for some of our private clients, but it's killer and it's going to hit all those things we talked about in today's video. It'll be a great resource for you. Again, go down below, click that link, go to the landing page, download it, and it'll be delivered to your inbox. If you're interested more in the topic of fasting, you have to get a copy of the Panda Diet. The seminal book that I wrote on fasting has got everything in here that you need to get started, to stick with the plan, to dramatically change your body and your mind. I go over hormones in here, how to break a fast, what to eat when you break the fast, what should you be drinking during a fast. It's got everything in here. And the feedback I get on this, it's very easy to read. It's only 80 something pages and it's a game changer. People that have gone through this have dramatically transformed their lives. All you gotta do, go down below the video, Click the link and it'll take you right to a place where you can buy a copy of my Panda Dive book.